Thank you, my lord. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Deepak Mishra to kindly sum up today's event. Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Thakur, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Honorable Union Minister for Law and Justice, Justice M. N. Venkat Chalaya, former Chief Justice of India and Chief Guest of today's evening, Honorable Justice Jayas Kahar, Kehar, Judge Supreme Court of India, Justice Bobbe, Mr. Mukul Rothki, Rani Attorney General for India, my esteemed colleagues on the bench, former judges of the Supreme Court, respected members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen. The Constitution of India is called a compassionate constitution, an inclusive constitution. My suggestion to you, lend me four minutes, show me four minutes compassion and include me and don't include me out. I hope I'm clear. The decision by the government to celebrate 26th November as the Constitution Day is not only a decision in furtherance of constitutionalism, but exhibits the will in absolute categorical terms, the concept of national duty. To rejoice the birth of free India which embraced the rule of law through an organic and flexible document called the Constitution of India. And the said rejoice and jubilation has an inherent responsibility. The Constitution of India can be thought of from many angles. I am not on interpretation of the constitutional provisions. There are some scholars who have treated the Constitution as the epitome of the perceptive vision of affectionate motherland and perceived as compassionate and flexible written words of ink having smell of love of blood. You may put a question. Is there a smell of love of blood? Yes. That's called thickness. That calls congregation. That calls brotherhood. That's called fraternity, a part of preamble of the Constitution. And that is why I've used the words, the smell of love of blood. What I precisely mean to say is that the thought, the idea, the ideology, the nature, and the perception that has been ingrained into this singular document are reflective of Himalayan endeavor. And I would not be wrong if I use the phrase, the patience and the calmness of the Pacific. It's because the founding fathers came from various spheres of life and the cross-sections of the society, and they were absolutely conscious that they were pyramiding a structural document for a great nation which is diverse and meant for people living in unity and diversity. And today, in remembrance, it's imperative to admit that we are grateful to them. It's the duty of each and every individual and every Indian today to remember gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. Love for the motherland has been reflected in an immaculate manner by the poet of Ramayana. After Ravan was vanquished, Lasman, a greedy man in a different way, requested Ram to stay back in Lanka, which was a city made of gold. Lord Rama said, I'm talking about the nationality. I'm talking about the motherland. In that context, Lord Rama said, Api Swannamai Lanka Name Rochate Lakshmana Janani Janma Bhumishya Swargadapi Gariyasi. And that is why we celebrate the Constitution Day. Let's come back to Dr. Rajendra Prasad. At the end of the making of the Constitution, President Rajendra Prasad made a solemn promise. I quote, to all we give the assurance that it will be our endeavor to end poverty and squalor and in companions, hunger and disease, to abolish distinctions 
and exploitation and to ensure decent conditions of living, we are embarking on a great task. Dr. Ambedkar, while concluding the final passage, laid emphasis on the independence and responsibility attached to it. No liberty is without any kind of responsibility. You are never free. Just remember that. That's what Ambedkar says. If we wish to preserve the constitution in which we have sought to enshrine the principles of government of the people, for the people, and by the people, let's resolve not to be tardy in the recognition of the evils that lie across our path and induce people to prefer government for the people to government by the people, not to weak in our initiative to remove them. That is the only way to serve the country, and I know not better. I know better. We have, I mean the Supreme Court and the courts, the constitutional courts in India, through the process of evolution, have graduated the thoughts of the Constitution. The process of graduation has not always been steady. Justice Kehar, the Attorney General, even the Chief Speaker Venkatchalia talked about the tilting of balance in a different way. That's why I have said it has always not been steady. All of us who present here are witness to such evolution and parties to it in a different way. I am talking about individual. I am not talking about individual participation or individual functionalism. But I am laying stress on institutional commitment and collective thinking pattern. There is a thought people should not suffer from. This is meant for the attorney. There is a thought that people should not suffer from a disease. That disease. Justice Krishna Ayad says in his inimitable style, affluenza, in contradistinction to influenza, which is a viral fever. You see, influenza can be cured with antibiotics or paracetamols. Affluenza is incurable. For that, there has to be a drive, and that is the solemn place under the Constitution. In that context, he has referred. I would like the young minds to focus. He quotes a passage from Napoleon Bonaparte. I like Napoleon Bonaparte, but this passage I hate. That's why I quote. There is only one thing in this world, and that is to keep acquiring money and more money, power and more power, and the rest is meaningless. According to me, this passage is to be hated. Why? The said message has to be abandoned and ostracized from the mind and heart. There has to be a collective commitment to have a progressive nation. Let it be remembered, we have become a nation. A century back, India was a country. You see, why do, why do I century back? It is the responsible, the history gives the privilege. The history gives the account. History gives the benefit to Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, the father of the nation that he really built the country, the continent India, to a nation. We became a nation a century back. And thereafter, the fight for independence began in a different way. Today, every citizen residing in this nation has to place for collective progress and collective harmony that the Constitution preaches. Justice Venkat Chalaya has talked about the judicial legislation I just quote a few lines from Felix Frankfurter. A court which yields to the popular will that by license itself to practice despotism, for there can be no assurance that it will not on another occasion indulge in own will. Today we are celebrating the Constitution Day. I see Mr. Jetmanan is there. Three years back, I well, was the president of the bar. His he said, I want to read a place. Will you everyone, will you please everyone stand up? And while complimenting him, late Chief, the Chief Justice Kapadia, the late Chief Justice Kapadia, he said, Just Marani can think of out of the box, but it's a brilliant idea. And we all of us took a place, a constitutional one. I would request you not to stand up, but all of us have to be guided by the words of the Constitution and commit to practice one singular religion the religion of the Constitution of India. Thank you for being compassionate.
occasion of constitution day of india former chief justice of india justice shri m n venkatrajaya delivered the inaugural lecture of the supreme court of india constitution day lecture series with that it's goodbye from the entire team of durdarshan